So for starters, we'll say we're adding the first field, which is to be validated, and it's called first name. Okay. So next, what we're going to be doing, we're going to use the handler again, and then we're going to add rules for that this field that we just added first name. So we've added the field. Now we're going to add rules for the field. You can add as many. The plan is to be able to add as many rules for this single field over here. So the second method that we're going to be calling on this handler, which is an, the instance of this object that we just instantiated here, is add rule to field. So add rule to field. Okay. And which field do we want to add the rule to? It's called first name. And now the second parameter that we're going to pass to that um, function is an array. And the array, the first um, element in the array is going to be what the name of the rule is. And in this case, we're going to call it min length, mi meaning minimum length. And a minimum length, you have to say what the minimum length will be. So in this case, the array will have first name, which is the rule name, and the second will be how long, what the minimum length of this validation rule is. And in this case, let's say two. Okay. All right. So next let's add another validation to validate first name and we're going to use the handle again add rule to fill and which fill again is first name again and again we'll pass an array the first um excuse me the first um item in the array is going to be the rule name so in this case we want to check if that um, this item that we're validating here is empty so since empty does not need a second parameter we don't pass anything in the second um, slot for the array so now that we know how we're going to be calling our validation class let's go ahead actually and write the validation class so just one more thing before we actually write the validation class since we're going to be um, using this validator to actually say um, check whether everything has passed validation or not. So there's one more method that we need to call and we haven't written that method again once once again. So that method is called form valid and that will return true or false depending on whether all these validations we've done at the top have passed or not. So form if form valid equal to true. So guys, um, I this is okay, but I want you to guys to get used to something like doing this if form valid basically is the same as equal to what I just did here true you know this is just a shorthand that we're going to be doing so instead of saying if form validation form valid equal to true just remove this and it will be the same so if this returns true we want to go ahead and redirect to the success page okay all right so now let's go ahead and actually write our validation class so in PHP we start a class with C L A S S. And if you are coming from another language, programming language, you might be used to something like public. And that probably wouldn't work here. So all you need is class. So if you get an error because you have public there, just remember to go ahead and remove that public. Okay? Alright, so class is called validator. Alright, so and it will have some fields inside of it. The first field it will have is an array, a private array. Private field, which is of type array. So it's called fields. And this will be used to store every field that we're validating. So anytime that we do something like add field, that field will that field name will be added to this array here. So that when we are doing validation, we'll, we can be able to loop over all the fields that we're validating. Okay. And next, we're going to be um, creating another field, which is field errors. And basically, that field will contain all the errors for each of the fields here. So each field will have its corresponding associative um, array inside of here, which will contain its errors. Okay. All right. And that will be a type of array as well. So let's just go ahead and actually comment on the top of here because we're going to be having quite a lot of stuff inside this class. So, so we're going to stay for storing form field names. And at the top here, we'll say for storing errors for form fields.
Okay, so next we're going to actually have a private variable, just the last one, and it will be called form is valid. And by default, is we're going to set it to true. So anytime that the form becomes invalid, we're going to actually change this from true to false.